there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, kind of in the middle of a campaign, in which we're playing as the Deutsche Volksrepublik using the submod for TNO Rule to Morgan. But the German Revolution, years of economic collapse, political chaos, and the death of two leaders, with the recent resignation of one has finally hammered the last nail on the coffin for the German Reich. Eyes from the OFM, from the sphere, and from all corners of the globe, watch in awe or in disbelief as a nation of the leaders of the national daddyism are executed and the new order finally collapses from within, marking an end to the end to an era. Espousing communist ideals. Successor states named itself the Deutsche Volksrepublik, uh, Republic, ruled mainly by the surviving old members of the extinct KPD. Uh, as the last organized uh, national daddyist uh, remnants are surrendered, the new government receives every factory and institution for itself, announcing the triumph of a socialist revolution and the annihilation of the uh, F word ideology bandit armies and the Third Reich. Marx would be proud. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, because things are not the way they are, things will not stay the way they are. But they'll brush. Ah, oh, Spartacus avenged. But risen from the ruins. The German people have suffered enough. Mothers mourn their sons who went to die in pointless and peerless ventures, and brothers fought alongside brothers during the Burger Creek, uh, or against each other. Now we are faced with the task of overcoming old scars, triumphing over bygone sorrow, and revitalizing our nation to build a path for peace and unity. The revolutionary struggle has been won, and the sleeping giant of socialism will be awakened again. The foundations for infrastructure, technology, and industry has been laid out by the previous regimes, even if it was damaged due to their own mistakes or the nece necessary battles to dismantle those same regimes. Our social society will not only recover what was lost, but improve the conditions to a degree that has never been seen before. And so Marx foretold our transitional stage begins. The chairman speaks. Wolf's journey of resistance was always one of secrecy, and even as a small group grew to lead an army, only a select few knew of his voice, his face, or even his name. His comrades only call him Misha or Delroth. As revealing his identity would lead to ensure tragedy now, Marcus Wolf stands as undisputed chairman of the Socialistische Einheitspartei, Deutschland, and oversees a nation of over 100 million people, turning his life and appearance more public than he could ever imagine. It is time for the head of the party to address the entire nation with words of hope and unity, a paramount declaration to the entire workers of the world and the oppressed nations, that yearn for freedom and that the epoch of proletarian revolution will continue, that the German people will pursue the path of liberation, and that Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin conceptualized. Cool. Uh, okay, I'll be honest, off-screen, I already did all this stuff. Also, um, this is not the really the beginning of the mod to get to this point. The beginning of the mod is, like, after, sh well, basically to get here. Speer has to win the Civil War. Fine, whatever, easy. Actually, it's very easy uh, at this point now. Uh, past that, there's, uh, like, protesters and eventually rioters if you don't give them what they want. So, if you really want to see how we get to this point, to the beginning of the Deutsch, uh, uh, Deutsche Volksrepublik, please let me know in the comments below, because I'm kind of okay with showing you how we got to this point here in the campaign. Uh, attack helicopters, that'd be nice. Uh, improve transport planes, you know, all the good stuff. Uh, so, we're led by a guy named Marcus Wolf. So, if you'd like to be read about him, please go ahead. But, seeing a Red Germany in TNO is kind of very odd to me. We're out front. And I don't know what we can do here, but if you'd like to check out the submod for yourself, it'll be the first link in the description below. But we have the Great Revolution. Oh, very nice. We also have the Great Break. Um, we also have the Remnants, as well as Sins of the Fatherland. Oh, God. Minus 5% stability. Hey, this is one gives us more stability. Facing the future. He was as Schrat woke up, just as like he did any other day. Early as well, mind you, it was, even if it was a Saturday. He brushed his teeth, used a tool that fetched a paper on his doorstep, and left a small apartment to use his ration card for some bread. He was one of the luckier ones on the block, for he actually had a place to call home. His neighbors couldn't really say the name, or certainly say the same, with their homes left as shelled out husks then, during the revolution. Still, so, the government provided a nice shelter for them just three blocks down, good bed, good food, bedding, and friendly enough neighbors. Plus, crime had finally decreased to the point where he could walk the streets without being throttled by a police officer, demanding papers he always forgot to carry. It brought stability he supposed in his head. As Niels turned the corner towards the bread shop, he noted the ruined apartments I had more workers than usual. Even stranger, many of the old co-workers from the steel mill were there, lifting rubble and shoving lint dirt and muck from the wreckage. They seemed so airy about it all. They were simply chatting by and by about rumors in the workplace and familial drama. The smiles on their faces throughout the hard labor. It got even a snicker from Niels as he went into earshot of a joke from Sarah, the mill's manager secretary, who he fancied dearly. Strange, he thought to himself. Never had he thought the mass reconstruction of the city would be taken so lightly. He was good as bread that day. He ate it, listened to the radio, and read a book, bartered for a coat using the few intact shoes, ate his dinner. On Sunday, he woke up just as he did like any other day. This made it even more startling to see a soldier on the doorsteps, handing him papers and demanding that he attend a regular civil work on the outskirts of the city for the next five weeks or so. After what he saw yesterday, perhaps it wouldn't be so bad. Reconstruction brings us all together. Finishing them off, completing this focus will launch the first operation against partisans. United SED. Begin the long reconstruction. Uh, ooh, we like more growth. 
Um, ooh, and inflation would decrease too. Anti fascist elections. Cool. Um, expose their crimes. I think it'd be good to start doing that. Finish them off first. Stains like the ones we watched from our fatherland are seldom easy to remove, as has been proven out these past few weeks. Even now, bombing continues to plague our most vital industrial hearts, while the countryside burns with the smoke and hatred of a thousand rebels that seek nothing to, and to tear down all that we built. The truth is apparent, as painful as it is to realize that national daddyism or socialism still lives. Being in the hearts of a man through or through the barrel of a rifle, regardless, Comrade Wolf has made his clear zero tolerance policy towards the remnants, and so they will be dealt with accordingly. These savages or savage reactionaries are simply denying the inevitable. Even now our soldiers ready themselves to quash any remaining resistance, whilst our police build networks of strength and loyalty alongside our Volk's Polizei allies across the most vulnerable cities and councils as uh, we've ought just mere months before we shall fight once again, not for the sake of the beautiful revolution and untervegs. For centuries, the armies of Germany have been one that was not fighting on the side of the people, but rather against them. The ministers, the power-hungry bourgeoisie, sent millions to die from imperialist wars in order to atrocities under the Nazi fascist regime. It would be a truly Herculean task to remove the stench after an alter of the popular perception that profoundly changed how our military force operates. Although we have gained experience in warfare through the Civil War and the Revolution, there is still arduous work ahead. While seasoned communist revolutionaries like Heinz Hoffmann and Erich Milka initiated the Volksarmee, now was a much larger force, as a compromise had to be made to pardon and include some who became our agents to prove their allegiance to the new army, such as Heinz Kessler, Willi Stolf, Fritz Strelitz, and many others who once served on the other side but now are integrated into the ranks of the organized force. Transitioning from a revolutionary guerrilla group to a professional army that would act in securing the streets and the borders to protect a nation from foreign invaders and serve a dutifully was now a mission that Friedrich Dickel and Erich Milka faced. As Milka moved closer to state and political affairs, he announced the creation of the Landstreikkräfte, uh, the Volkademie's own ground-based military branch and left under Marshal Willi Stolf. Soon he renounced the leadership of the NVA itself, leading to Marshal Heinz Kessler. Willi Stolf and Heinz Kessler had the experience, vision, and the will to truly construct an army that would be comparable, if not superior, to the extinct Wehrmacht that they once served him. Obviously, Erich Milke kept a close eye on them, but that was not that much of a bother for now. They declared extinct other smaller guerrilla organizations, integrating them into the army and organizing the rank system further with representatives of the new guard, like Meinhof, and of the old guard, like Hoffman, gaining representation. As guns, artillery, tanks, trucks, and other mechanized or motorized equipment arrived from both the old government and the guerrilla, were reorganized and put to use again. The Germans felt that they could defend themselves again and protect the revolution. Soldaten Marsch. Oh god. Film declaration. Oh god. 56 divisions. Uh, the city of uh, Machstadt was crowded with the citizens from all across the country. Uh, the men in grey of the Volksarmee army and the members of the Volkspolizei stood in guard of various key positions, while phrases were held, or, uh, held by, high by banners, calling for unity, socialism, reconstruction, denazification, and peace. Tens of millions would be seeing and hearing this event on the TV and radio, citizens of the newly founded republic, and even workers from Tokyo, New York, and other cities. Celebrations were held to commemorate the defeat of fascism and the revolution, as anti international was performed by the Central Orchestra de NVA, before a reserved and soothing voice introduced itself to the listeners. The man speaking in the Rundfunk was simply not any government official or general, it was the chairman himself, Marcus Wolf. Even though there was no more Reichsführer, the Führerprinzip survived as an idea, as many would still admire and respect the leader more than the party. After the initial address, a long-winded speech itself began. Today, I remind you that the Reich is gone, but Germany lives and the German people prevail. A new era has begun, an era of reconstruction, progress, and revolution. Gone is the era of warmongers and butchers, for there will be no more slaves, only the united workers whose socialism can bring a true an end and rectify the barbaric past of the shameful state of Nazism across Europe and allow security and peace to flourish. To the party, the army, and all of our institutions, we have total assistance to the proletariat, as we overcome an enormous obstacle once again. Surely, we will act to destroy the fascist snake, but our goal is to bring about a time without any more crimes against humanity. Our main struggle begins now, as we seek to stamp out the enemy from within and guarantee that Europe will not suffer through the dark times once again. We have buried fascism and the atoms shield us from imperialism. Our revolution stands here on the shoulders of the giants, Marx, Engels, Lenin, Luxembourg, Liebknecht, Talman, and Peek. I wish all workers of the world an excellent afternoon. As the speech ended, Alpha stand and Aus Runen. The new anthem was performed by the orchestra. I'm starting to like him. Ah, but we have these divisions now. This would cost us money now. Oh, that's something I don't like. Costing us money. Oh, God, no. Uh, same as fine. Uh, not sure, uh, Kessler, huh? Well, there you go. Village Dolph, uh, you have more defense, why not? Over here, we're gonna assign a tank general, Siegfried Riedel. Motorized guy. Uh, there you go, Brunner. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, these are still, hmm. Well, then. Dickel? Infantry? Well, guerrilla fighter, I guess. 
Strelitz. There's not too much we can choose. Stech, Bart, Heinz Hoffman. So be it. I don't know what's going to happen. I literally have no idea what's going to happen. But I'm game for almost anything. Poland is still in a civil war, it looks like. Begin the long reconstruction. Swaths of the Rhine's industrial heart remain in tatters. Hundreds of acres of farmland continue to burn. Its soil is tainted by bomb and toxic combined. Cities through already having been re begun reconstruction. So remain husks of the former selves. The destruction of our fatherland cannot be understated. Nor can the effect of that lies ahead. Thus, for it's in such an incredible war. Oh, shnikes, what happened? Uh, I can't move this. Uh. Pigs of the slaughter. Uh. Okay, so this is the first part of the game, huh? Okay, so... Uh. Well, I'll, I'll finish reading this in just a little bit. <clears throat> Corruption, 100, 100, 100. Call of Maron acts next. Skip turn. Okay, so the GUI in front of you is a turn based strategy with the goal of either reducing the enemy health bar below 10% or eliminating all enemies. Each character is either representative of a task force dedicated to disabling the Roman to the right, on the left, or a character representing a partisan group fighting the newly established DVR on the right. So the people on the left are the people we need to get rid of still. Um. All three have three stats. Uh, all of them have three stats. Supply being the resources, morale, and general state of mind of the force. And corruption. All the force is stuffed up, stuffed up to enemy influence. Morale restores supply uh, in linear proportions, with 15 supply gain on 100 morale, 10 on 66, and so on. And supply acts as a threshold, which allows more complex operations to commence. Both sets of six operations that can choose from that have different effects on two steps for information. Should both supply and morale of a character fall below 5, the character is considered eliminated, getting so completely removed from the battle. Also, both health bars reduce every time. Any character of the side receives damage and cannot be restored, as that side is lost, can, cannot continue the active fight anymore. Losing one battle is not the loss of the campaign, but in the final enemy. Finale, the enemy will have more forces. Being a good commander is in your, most, is in your interest. Begin arresting known Nazi terrorists and sympathizers for 5 base strength and 10 base morale. It cannot be used if acting supply. Okay. We'll launch uh, a propaganda campaign against Nazism for 15 base morale and damage to all enemies. Exalt KPD heroes. KPD heroes. We will honor our martyred anti-fascist and communist heroes restoring 25 morale to all friendly characters. The raids. Launch raids against them. 15 base strength and morale. Infiltrate Nazi cells. Destroy them from within, adding 25 corruption, increasing all incoming uh, strength and morale damage by 25%. Request support. Smuggle equipment. Um, they will use their rat lines and leftover structure to arm themselves, restoring for strength to all allies. Anti leftover propaganda. For 15 morale, huh? Local bombings. Launch terror bombings. Assassinate an officer against uh, local books, both side inspectors for 10 base strength and 15 base morale to a random task force. Bla bribes and blackmail. But their funds are used to bribing and blackmailing our officers, adding 3 corruption, increasing all incoming strength and morale damage by District 30. Glorify the past. Um. You literally have to do the, the thing here. So, let's save. I'm going to screw this up. I'll be honest. This is my first time doing it. I'm going to screw it up. What do you mean to skip turn? Why would you want to skip turn? That doesn't make any sense to me. But, here, um, hmm. If there's a representative of the task force, dedicated to branch. On the left. Oh. Infiltration is 100. Well. Adding 25 corruption, increasing all incoming strength and amount damage. Well, this one says 40. Adolf von Thaden's efforts of internal propaganda have allowed for everyone to recover 40 morale for everybody. Strength. Oh, wow. Operators report that Alexander Andres group distributed anti-communist propaganda for negative 27.2 morale. So morale is 384. 387, I mean. Strength is not bad. Infiltration is 100. Oh. Look at the bar. Slowly going down. Local bombings. Alright, so. Added corruption. 
Increasing all incoming strength and morale damage by 25%. Restore 25 supply to all friendly characters. 25, 125, 37 raids. So 15 base strength, 15 base morale. Record 40 morale for everybody. Okay. Third military target one of our officers for negative 34 damage. Huh. This is weird. 25 supply, morale, and for 25. Yeah. M supply, morale, and corruption. Well, we don't destroy all supply. We have morale. Oh, they have no morale now. They're very corrupt. Um, for support. A mole was uncovered by the confessor that were used by Alexander Andre and that her corruption level rose by 30, but it doesn't know any names. Huh. We'll skip to the next turn of operations, huh? Yes, I should act tight. Oops. Oh, well, I know I'm going to screw this up anyways. Well then. I know I'm screwing this up a lot, but, you know, whatever. Both sides have six operations I could choose from that have different effects. Uh, raid, 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 raid. Moles uncovered. Pigs to the slaughter, huh? Oh. Well, in the planning room, Jacob's eyes stared straight ahead towards forward towards the captain, as did his comrades beside him. Seven soldiers were selected for the squad, which was built uh, what was one squad out of fifteen. Tomorrow these fifteen squads would sweep across Hessen countryside to flush out one of the target's largest available resistance groups left of the revolution. Now limited to but a few isolated strongholds. It was a miracle that they hadn't reached the cities. Perhaps the Volks pulled aside that were cut out. Command a present. Yakov's body immediately stiffened alongside his comrades, a rather short but speckled man then entered the room, approaching the map of the Hessian region strewn across the center table. He stared at it for only but a moment before his eyes found Yakov's. Who is the squad officer here? The captain and Oscar approached. I am Commando. His eyes went up and down the man before he grunted softly. There was in there another man, presumably his aide, entered and handed him a clipboard. With a little fanfare, he dropped it on the table. The names of the cities across Hess, and even some of Bavaria were scribbled across the clipboards of parchment. I'm glad to say this hunt size has been adjusted. We'll be covering the cities along the countryside. Jakob could feel the air in the room changing with excitement. Even Oscar Seaman settled and drew a pause. Uh, pause drew the, for, drew the room for a moment. Commander, I don't... We simply don't have enough squads to cover that much area, said Oscar, leaning against the table. Yakov could have sworn that he saw a smirk from the commander before he turned to Oscar. That won't be a problem, Captain. I've also received word of the Central Committee. We'd like 50 more squads assigned to our operation, and even greater sounds poised the room for what felt like minutes, for a chuckle. Have uh, they not toyed with us for long enough? They started They started like this, and I'll be darned if we don't finish it here now. He waved to his aide to leave before looking back at Oscar. Don't you agree, Captain? Yes, Commander responded to the Captain. Um, so, cities have already been begun reconstruction, the still remaining husks of the former uh, selves. The destruction of the fall line cannot be understated. 
And working the effects that lies ahead. Thus, for such an incredible war, there also must be an incredible uh, effort to rebel. Over the Central Committee has already convened to approve the formation of a national authority to handle local and large scale uh, reconstruction alike. The Volks Wiederaufbau, Behoda, the People's Reconstruction Authority. The coordination of financial resources, along with the allocation of workers for a national project, will be vital to raise a republic back to, from the depths of toil and destitution. It should be long, yes, but the rewards we reap from this shall carry a revolution to until successes. We will, will not fail. The revolution lives. We received a radio broadcast from Irkutsk in Siberia from a socialist regime known as the Far Eastern uh, Soviet Socialist Republic. The state is led by the former head of the NKVD, Genrik Kigoda. Well, they boast the same policies and even government ministers as the old Soviet government, but also it also doesn't surprisingly, uh, surprising to appear uh, that appears that the NKVD plays a large role in the Far Eastern society, with the police state and surveillance being extensive. Yagoda claims this is a temporary measure to preserve socialism in the state, and they will lessen the NKVD grip on society once the situation stabilizes. However, the question of whether to support an extensive police state with ties to the old Soviet government remains. Out of the depths of Siberia, the Union returns. Enact mass nationalization. No matter who rules Germany and around the world, be it a Kaiser, President, or Inferior, a constant has been permanently been there. The monopolists, the stock and the bank executive, when Europe sends the youngest among them as the factory owners who send the weapons, the medicine, the food, and uniforms to the front line, taking a large profit for themselves. In terms of economic crisis, there's those parasites who live in luxury while the rest of society suffers unemployment and hunger. The time has come for these rats to give what they have for so long rule the factories, the mines, the farms, truck stations, and the train lines that transport the products, as well as the harbors that export them all. all should be placed on the hands of the state and the worker, where they will stay with a firm grip controlled by those who work them and not for those who profit for the work of the others. Matrosen von Rostock It was in a silent night when he called Donuts, Oberfeldshaba der Marine was brought. Brought, beat him, bruised him with a rope around his mouth. He was shuffled or muffled shouts of anger as he resisted arrest with every last muscle in his body. The sailors and officers were shocked at the display of strength coming from the 75-year-old man as he was dragged into a booth where the new chief of what was called the Volksmarine, Valdemar Werner, and his advisors, Wilhelm M. and Heinz Nukushin, stood by his side, waiting and observing the situation. Werner was surprised that Dennis was still alive. With his commanding hand extended to the side, he ordered for the once Grand Admiral to have the rope removed, rope removed from his mouth. As the rope was removed, the first things that came out of his were not words, but blood and one tooth. I've taken a deep breath, Carl simply looked at those who let, he let go. You Bolshevik traitors, so rotten and disgusting. A skull out of his fury, a sailor hit him in the, with a the baton, but new cushion intervened. Why don't you just execute him as we did to Oreda? It's a waste of our time, the, sa uh, the sailor shouted. But new uh, simply just for calm. He'll be tried and his crimes will not go unpunished, for now let him be. The sailor quickly compelled or complied, leaving to guard the door. I do not need your pity, you Judeo Bolshevik snake. What is this even for? Are you going to try to convince me to become one of you, or are you going to pardon me so I can learn? Dernitz gave a sarcastic smile. Werner sighed, and when finally Dernitz noticed where he was, the same prison Rostock that he had jailed so many before, including Valdemar, was going to be where he would ride until his trial. Weeks passed, and as Dernitz saw his once proud fleet defiled with communist imagery and a brand new flag, the commander's cold eyes let out tears with thousands of German men and carriers, destroyers, and frigates fought for what he spent his entire life to prevent. As he sunk, the sailors rose. Bricks and bricks. Or bells and bricks. Papers, so many papers. Gerhard, sure, had never seen this many papers in his life. Even during the revolution, it was ironic, though, in a roundabout way. In a past life, he soared across the skies and made his marks. Uh, or mark, a darn good pilot, and even a greater infiltrator for a wolf, a fledging organization. Now, here he was, a bureaucrat. An ambitious, high-ranking one at that, but a bureaucrat nonetheless. While these thoughts danced, danced in his head, Schur's eyes were drawn to his office window where the flickering lights of Machstadt flickered around across the cities and skyline of harmonious equality. To Schur, it was a blueprint. The smoldering wrecks of destroyed buildings and raised streets spelt an opportunity to build something even greater, something that all the German people could appreciate and utilize equally, of course. Implementing full economic planning wouldn't happen overnight, but the work that he did tonight was to the foundations for the new people's reconstruction authority to build upon. It was lucky then that Reinman and Schur saw eye to eye on the subject matter. He knew better than anyone that Central Committee was exactly unified in their opinion on how to begin our transition to a true Leninist economy. Some saw wisdom in Luxembourgish thought, believing decentralized control to lead to a smooth, pain free movement between economic forces. Others, God help their souls, believe that Bukharin's ideas could be implemented more correctly under a German administration. Schur grumbled slightly, the past of the past, why would they accept that? To decentralize would bring about uncertainty, and revert back to Bukharan's unfathomably Byzantine concept of Leninist economics would doom the German people before they even knew it. Why even bother with the mistakes of the past? Is it not reactionary to reject the innovation of the future for the full comfort of the past ideals? Sure, to convince them, all of them, lest the revolution slip from their fingers, the world's watching us, all of us, uniting the SED. It is clear as day that socialism will be the future of Germany, yet a party remains split on how to truly construct it. The Soviet communists who fought against National Socialism under various cells eventually formed their own army in what has become the party organization, which itself has become the vanguard of the working class of Germany and def definitely the strongest of its kind. As we struggle to build a second home of the revolution to secure from rotting away and falling apart, we must protect from the bourgeois ideas such as revisionism, reformism, and nationalism. We must truly build a Marxist-Leninist party in Germany that Comrade Ernst Thälmann and Wilhelm Pieck foresaw in the writings one that would guide the proletariat every step of the way in a 
eviscerate fascism and capitalism from our planet. Our tycoon's blunder. The four Valvishoff's fear fell in unexpected ways, but none of them were able to see or escape punishment for the truly remorseless actions, as millions of laborers rose up or were liberated in the revolution. The conglomerates attempted to resist the proletarian offensive, failing miserably and having most of their assets seized by the newly established worker state. Him and Yosef Abbs was the first to go. Amid a pitiful attempt at a getaway, his vessel was intercepted, and there was no mercy shown to him, nor were there any, any in the seizure of IG Fabens. Ernst von Siemens and the Sperrit and the so-called pragmatists made the, quite the effort quite effort, to try and plead for mercy. However, his usage of slave labor, even if reduced, and his cooperation with Speer submitted his execution. As it is known, the Wehrwolf movement has a frightful issue in our society, and after some investigation, it was found that one of his main bankrollers was Friedrich Flick. He had hidden his crimes against humanity and his genocidal affairs from Speer and Cheska, but he knew we would bring you to light, so he prepared an escape escapade through the rat lines in a burgundy as he saw his coal and steel factories nationalized. He would have succeeded if it wasn't for his temper. Accustomed to ordering slaves around, the head of the Dama Bens had a fiery argument with the hired Velvovs, allowing our intelligence to locate them. The execution of the mercenaries in the Friedrich was a bloody venture, as expected when dealing with the SS Velvov. Yet we considered it worth uh, it was worth it, as we recovered gold, jewelry, and steel on the tycoon's baggage. Now remained only Edmund Geilenberg, and some directors, of course. Uh, he thought that since he worked for the state, he could avoid the death penalty, though, as Engels once said himself, bourgeois state property is still bourgeois, especially in a fascist state. When it's time for the execution, Gallenberg remained silent and freed slaves cheered, expropriated all. The anti-fascist elections, and thus the parties finally united. The disagreements between our comrades have been muzzled and our united front is secured, however. The work is far from over, and our status as the vanguard of the revolution must be secured even further. In order to bolster and galvanize the supporters, as well as finally secure our legitimacy to the rest of the world, elections must be held. Over 30 years have passed since the first free, last free elections, and to describe it as a foreign concept for the German people would be a gross understatement. From the loyal worker to the liberated slave, ignorance and uneducated behavior strikes deep in the minds of our people. How can we hope to spread our party values when our people remain apathetic? Common Wolf, oh, Common Wolf recognizes this, and thus he's ordered the mass mobilization of our civil workers to spread our party mantra far and wide. So toll the bells, spread the ballot boxes. Election day is coming, and it'll be a glorious victory for us all. The Einungs Tag. Today, oh my God. Uh, through referendums and other forms of public consultations, the 50 members of the Länderkammer have been confirmed. Now the country is not only run by the central committee or local party organizations, but at regional representatives, and soon every single district would have representatives elected by the people. Even in this frozen world, the people would still be warned by the ever-extended embrace of the party. The first official congress of the party will be announced when the two leaders appear, appear to the other prominent members. Max Reimann was the president of the Volkskammer, the parliamentary organ that was still to be organized by the elections would replace the Reichstag. Ryman's position was also greater control of the previously mentioned Landerkammer. The smiling leader began a speech after the Internationale was sung by every member. In this age, we, the defenders of mankind of peace, raised to life by Lenin's spirit and inspired by Tailman's sacrifice. The workers of our land have seized control from the howling hyenas of war. Builders on guard, let us construct a cradle with courage and love against the enemies of our people. Against the revisionists and deceivers, I am ready to fight for our unity to my last dying breath alongside my comrade and respectable chairman, Marcus Wolf. After thunderous applause, it was time for Marcus Wolf himself to address the party. First, he organized the principles of the party and affirmed its supremacy above the army and ministries. Where there is a comrade, the party is too. Uh, there, that was a mantra. The party is there too. As becoming a member of the party would not only become accessible, but would be widely promoted, even with a youth wing, which he called the Freie Deutsche Junge, being created. <clears throat> Although normally the party had been a coalition of anti-fascist revolutionaries, the committee was dominated by the hardliners who were quick to impose a theoretical and democratic centralism, enforcing the party line and merging smaller groups and federations in, a, uh, in a federations and centers loyal to Talmanite brand of Marxism, Leninism, the ideology of Spartacism. We'll all be like Spartacus. Oh my god. Oh. So this one says the army is disorganized. The National Vox Army, or Sport Army Organization. It's organized, it's organized, it's organized. Oh my god. A fact für Frieden und Socialismus. Kommt aus, kommt zu uns. Are these real propaganda posters? Hmm. Huh. Two to the sailors. There'll be a campaign to the newcomers in the Volksmarine. Okay. So this page, though, is called the Second Extraordinary Congress. Government Stability, Party Unity, Lander Kammer, Discontent Hardliners, Militaries, and Reformists. Oh, no, we can see both right here. Oh, okay. Uh, Ryman's call for unity. We'll make a call for unity within the party. So that improves every wing's content. And vote on the party's center. Boost hardliners. Promises of freedom. Highest elected officials will make promises to the reformists. Our way or the highway will start to enforce democratic and theoretical centrism. The folks come in the party will call back the old Leninist motto. A sacred war. The military ring will call for more investment of the Volk's army. Try that one. Rotterflieger. 
With a large scale reformation of the books of army underway, there was a momentary sense of panic for the various pilot brigades that had defected from the Lupop at a certain revolution. And as with such fear, rumors fester quickly that the air forces would be absorbed into the army. We relegated these pilots to serve the women to those tied to the ground. Others were more optimistic, being leaving in a completely independent branch that could function independently instead of the People's Republic in its own right. One of these few men was Captain Ehenfest, and high above uh, the outskirts of Karlsruhe, among the clouds above, he was soaring, his magnificent craft cut through the clouds like butter at speeds attainable by few, its sweeping wings reached towards the skies of it attempting to touch the heavens themselves. To Ehenfest, the jet was no machine, it was a living, breathing being that sped out enough bullets to tear open a tank while slicing through the atmosphere at a pace threatening the speed of sound. For such a mighty warrior of the skies, what justice was there to relegate him to a mere sport for the army? Had they not fought an entire revolution to exercise such traditional benign behavior, this was a future of warfare, and it would be either take the center stage of it all or be swept away by the tides of history. Once landed at Ehrenfest, Greg opened his cockpit to meet the face of Heinz Kessler, just below the plane's fuselage. If there was any man in Germany left to serve, he would gladly serve Kessler, for he had a more balanced way of thinking when it came to the future of the revolution in his military. Realizing what his presence meant here, he quickly took off his flight equipment and clambered out of the aircraft to meet him. Once out of eye, took a deep breath, preparing for the best and worst news to come, so we asked with a slight tinge of jittery excitement. Before he could even speak, Kessler nodded, a subtle smirk smirking on his lips. Yes, Captain, the Central Committee just voted on this morning. Uh, it looks like we'll be getting our independent air force after all. He popped open his briefcase, handing Anfest a sizable folder of reassignment orders. For once, you can be happy to see them. To the skies, comrades. Well, fighters and cast, that's all I really care about. We have enough for here that I used earlier, actually. Uh, strategic bombers, goodbye. Um, I'm not sure if we need a safe part. Okay, this one. Oh, completely caught for unity. Uh, I don't know. Completed, oh wait. Prerequisites, completed a second war decision. Well, we can't do that. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, what's the economy looking like? Okay, so we have the growth. We have, like, no debt. We're gonna, oh my god. Look at the yearly deficit. Um. At least we got some growth. We're fair. Inflation zero percent. That's nice. Good Friday agreement, I guess. Invest in the growth. Oh my God, that's so much debt. I guess. I guess we have no no taxes. Oh, I guess we are a communist state. We don't look at that that page then. I can vote. Securing the revolution. There goes a whisper throughout the world, workers, don't you hear it? And the, it is the voice of the war ministers, whispers of the Nazis and monopolists, from all continents of fascist shout, death to the People's Republic. We must not allow this to happen, the army must be reorganized and renovated to compete on even terms with the likes of the Japanese and American superpowers, truly representing and uniting the people. The seven of the Marxist Leninists is set by a revolutionary commission, as that the party must guide the rifle, not that the rifle will guide the party. The military force will be supervised by the Central Committee, and the youth and all of our society must be called into joining our efforts constructing a professional legion of Bolsheviks that will investigate the armies of global capitalism. I can vote. Ernestus Delvuta gripped his slip of paper tightly, his eyes darting back and forth across the presentation hall, where so many other men and women just like him had been herded and sat down. It had only been a few months since Ernestus was liberated from that, the cursed place in Eclipeda. He'd seen his wife die in a field of sand and pebbles, the sun beating down on him as he fell to his knees in tears. He thought, though he was free now, the world has become so confusing. How could he adjust? Would there ever be a place for a man like him? Beyond his notice, a sharply dressed party official approached a podium on the stage's hall, or the hall's stage. Um, was tapping a microphone jutting out from it. Attention, attention, please, he called to the people. Their chatter quickly died down and the room went silent. Wunderbar. Wunderbar. Let me be the first to congratulate your newfound camaraderie around you as well as your emancipation under our People's Republic. He bore a wide smile, pausing as if to expect applause. Now, none came. Well, I know that many of you are quite confused about our system of government, as well as coming elections some of you have heard about. You've been through so much, and the least we can do is teach you how to serve your republic. Still smiling, and then left his podium to present a small slot of box at the front of the stage. But for Anastas, Anastas knew it. Hours had gone by with a deluge of information overwhelming him. He barely understood who, he even, who wasn't even in charge, much less voting in an election. In the end, the party official allowed everyone to put their slip of paper or ballot into the box, and they're free to go. The next morning, Anastas awoke to a distant cheers on the outside. He left his small apartment, taking out a newspaper, sat in his door, only to see the same headline on each paper. Age. Socialist Unity Party Victorious, 657 seats, Independence Game 43. With that, he nodded in satisfaction, went back into his apartment, and began getting ready for the day ahead. The revolution shimmers, having won the people's hearts. Cool. Smashing the swastika operation, huh? Form the people's enterprises. The era of corporatism and capitalism and domination over our economy is a relic of the past. Now, a legal form of industrial enterprise comes from the front. The Volkswagen, uh, 
Vox Eigna Betrieb Enterprise made work by and ruled by the people. From the managing director, the secretary of the factory, part of the organization, to the trade unionists, the chief accountant, the technical director, and the, as a, the common worker, each will pr proudly cooperate as equals. The associations of publicly owned enterprises, while vertically integrated major industries of consolidated production and reduced waste, as under the responsibility of the state planning commission, we will establish new enterprises for the primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors of the economy. Going from consumer goods to light industries, raw materials to light and heavy industries, electronics and all the people's republic will need to produce for the people in the revolution, the breath of fresh air, though. Heinrich Seiz looked out over the motley force that had rallied the, his banner ever since the effing communists had taken Germania. The theater that represented still galled Heinrich. Not that it mattered now, as national socialism had failed, and the world was one where the strong replaced the weak and the strong had risen. Turning around, he put on his cap as he marched off to do his duties as the last member of the Wehrmacht. Behind him, he felt his fellow soldiers fall in, their discontent radiating from them. He couldn't judge them, he knew that there were still groups fighting for the Aryan race, but they had failed and that's the time for their duty to end. The communists were waiting for him at a small table surrounded by armed guards as he marched with the Prussian precision that he made Germany great. Taking his place at the table, Heinrich grabbed the pen that was presented to him and signed the document of surrender, passing it along to be countersigned by his fellow soldiers as he rose the pen was placed down. So you've done it, the fear is legacy is for naught. My father's sacrifice was for nothing. Your father died so the millions of innocents could be slaughtered, that's no sacrifice. He fought for Germany, fought for the Reich, Heinrich snarled back at the communists sitting across from him. Silence fell for a few minutes as the men lay down their arms around him and then scattered swastikas they still had were taken down. Heinrich had done what the might of Britain and America and the Bolsheviks had not. He had ended the Thousand Year Reich. He had ended the triumph of the Aryan race over the lesser races infesting the world. Setting up a Jewish pistol from his belt to hand it in, as he placed it down, it felt heavier than ever before. History has a heavy hand. And Yeda Rosalist. It was an early morning as Ap Matis Ap Apsil woke up in his base for the first time. He was ready to serve the instrument of power of the working class, the army that would protect the workers and the farmers that would shatter fascism. The first initially all volunteered to introduce conscription, and the one of the conscripts was Absol. However, he was adamant about serving, and he wanted to make his father and anti-fascist proud of him, and his, also his mother, although she didn't care about politics. Among the thousands of men serving in the National Vox Army, many had served previously in the Wehrmacht, but mostly in the lower middle ranks, as generals in, in such were either executed, fled, or imprisoned. But a sizable amount were members of the early revolutionary squadrons that stormed palaces and prefectures and fortified the Red Rhine, the so called guerrilla. Absol had watched the Battle of Leipzig in awe from the windows of his home. The tanks would uh, sing thunderous songs as the people of Leipzig would wave to the troops, most of them with their new uniforms, patches, and the band following along. It seems that most of the changes introduced by the high command of the Vox Army were focused on not trying to only, only to the rising number of fresh new recruits, but to improve the image of the army, as people would wave, give flowers, shake hands, and hug the soldiers like they were family. A small child would be amazed when she saw a female soldier saying how she wanted to be a soldier herself. The picture of her being picked up by the soldier would be taken up and used for propaganda nationwide, as Absol observed. Some members of the Landekammer were using the opportunity to be with soldiers and appeal to the people. It was an act or not he could care less, as the euphoria was amazing. Especially when his eyes met with the love of his life, another soldier, a girl that went by the name of Monica. Now all those different types of uniforms and core colors, the awards, ranks, and periodicals were irrelevant to him. But before the dashing youngster could make his move, he was called back to march to another city. Maybe we'll meet in a year. This was a crime. It's for far too long. The crimes committed by the Fuhrer and his corrupted butchers have been hidden from the public. We paid lip service and denounced the various humanitarian disasters and mass killings carried out under the Third Reich. Yet many of them so turned a blind eye to the endlessness of all the heinous and inhuman acts done by their hand. The Central Committee has decided that the situation will remain no more. The entire truth shall not be concealed. Or weeks. Uh, oh, four weeks. We've been preparing for our lengthy list of reports, documents, and first hand accounts that go into every single detail of the horrifying brutality of the Fuhrer's regime. Uh, the next step will be to compile and share it, be it through the radio, TV, history classes, world of mouth and through various writings of the most prolific authors and newspapers. If a lie was told a thousand times, let the truth be told two thousand times more. Flotte Austin. As such a fencer funk, uh, the main state television broadcaster began the usual commercial. No surprise to many, uh, to many of the workers at what they saw. Uh, well, those are all new companies, these new colorful commercials, ever since the mass nationalization, one after the day after the other. Products were being churned out left and right, it seemed. The availability and prices of goods were announced, and there was no competition between the brands. Two, uh, the average citizen that had once had access to the same products, it was simply changed in a cold coat of paint. As it wasn't Volkswagen, it was now Trabant and Wartburg, being produced by the H v -H -V -E -B Sassen, uh ring instead. However, the former slaves and the once disenfranchised masses were glued to the screens seeing the watches, clothes, utensils, wines, and all that socialism had offered. It was not Fanta, it was Vita Cola. The main industry and electronic sectors were also advertised as an expropriation of them, and the rule of factories by the working class and the party unison were chairs of glorious victory of the Marxism-Leninism. Electronics. 
uh, microelectronics and data process processing industries were shown along to the large industrial complexes and enormous factories as the future of a possible electronic socialism. The corporatist model has been extinct and substituted by the new electronically essentially planned socialist model of Germany, even at the local level. From small shops and malls, shopping malls and distribution centers had regular prices and worked under the state organs of regulation, while the Gerent countryside, which was in the process of conflict with the landlord and slave owners, also cooperated with their own organs. The beloved Fersefunk, also a channel dedicated to children's cartoons, sports, military propaganda, and the ideals of Spartacism, healthcare, and also anti racism and anti sexism campaigns. It became one of the most effective ways to combat Nazi propaganda, though Red World is colorful. This one is. Hamburg Trials. A house of every German. One of the most devastating effects of both the Volker Krieg and now the revolution was the already strained housing system shattering. Across Germany, homelessness, one of the worst scourges of capitalism, has gripped the proletariat. If we are to secure the Volksrepublik, we must deal with this problem before it goes any wolf. Or any wolf, any, any worse. Thankfully, Max Reimann had proposed an interesting idea. An end mass construction program to secure housing for the German people alongside our propaganda campaign. To get those with housing to help those without. Konrad Wolf, the chairman's brother, already has his name proposed for the control of the propaganda side of the campaign. Housing shall be secured as a right. Now as a commodity or a pillage or and renovations will be in order to recover old homes. The Brown Book. Hans Martin Scheiler could not believe his name was all over the media. He worked so well to hide in the depths of Prague, working as an advisor, but and he had to shut down his business and took every safety precaution, and yet now his crimes were on every newspaper, TV, and radio, along with the names of, of other hundreds of his old compatriots. It wasn't long before the man uh, met his fate in extrajudicial execution, when the forces under General Meinhof's command acted during their patrol. The Brown Bunches were called as a book compiling the names and crimes of the Nazi officials during the Third Reich in all areas state, economy, administration, army, justice, and science. Written by SED politician Albert Norden and the mass published by the party itself was quickly quickly gained notoriety, being translated into other languages, some sometimes as Polish or English, reaching millions of Germans and even some anti fascist foreigners. Almost for almost an entire month, almost all the news channels reported was about the horrid truth being revealed, with the effects of convincing part of the reactionary masses to reconsider their views, and ensure that even more support for the socialist government by those who are neutral or already sympathizers. A process of telling the true history of Germany in schools and universities and through the media would begin. As the intelligence service began to dig deeper and the media spoke louder, more and more prominent NSDAP members and sympathizers were arrested, beaten, or ostracized, becoming commonly known as the Day of Justice would come out would come about, to ensure that those monsters would pay for the crimes, not only that, but the usual, usually sturdy German had become more empathetic, as tales of people who were Jew of Jewish or Polish descent being apologized to on the streets or even given gifts. Three decades of propaganda sowed a tree of anti-Semitism, eugenics, anti-Bolshevism, ultranationalism, and disregard for human life that also allowed atrocities like the Shoah to happen. To evolve and to change so quickly is a formidable journey that an entire nation has embarked upon. The truth will set you free. They really hate fascism and national daddyism. Minus 300% for each. Wow. Wolf and party. It was the first day of Wolf in his office, and as the man who walked across the streets of Markstadt, which is our capital, uh, he was met with confused looks. The man without a face, as he was called by his enemies, he had finally appeared in public, of course, with guards at every corner, either surrounding him or hiding between the distorted streets of the capital. Many didn't understand why this man held such was held in such high regard. Was he going to be one of the ministers? Was he an associate of Reimann, or perhaps one of Mikkel's men? It only dawned on them that when they saw him entering the damaged Volkshalle, which was being rebuilt or named what became what engineers called the Palace of the Republic, while some more enthusiastic revolutionaries called it the People's Palace. No one except for the construction workers had set foot in that broken structure in weeks. Everything indicated that this man could only be the famed chairman of the SED, Marcus Wolf. A crowd of interested Machstadtlers quickly formed the streets, trying to get a close glimpse of the fabled spymaster, but to no avail. The meeting was not one that was going to be announced to the public, but really reunited the High Commission and the most irrelevant figures of the revolution. Generals, ministers, and representatives of various important groups formed what was temporarily the governing commission, but some of these men stood out and were somewhat heroes on their own merits and were considered by the rest of the revolutionaries to be the ones that would retain their posts. According to the official report, and as the news spread, what was discussed in the meeting were the media actions that were to be taken for the transition to the People's Republic, the officialization of revolutionary symbols, the implementation of various policies and actions towards the denazification program. As was announced through the uh, radio and television, the legislation that was put in place by the revolutionaries in the Red Rhine was now official throughout all German lands. A new era, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps. The Platinum Bow System. As a struggle to end homelessness and poverty continues, the method of large panel system buildings has come up as a cheaper and more efficient solution to a vast nation. To curb the housing shortage in areas affected by wartime conflicts and the mismanagement from the fascist tyrants, we must construct new residential areas uh, areas with these new styles along with some of the models of the old ones in an already ongoing process of reconstruction. Ryman has drawn up the main factors, the accommodation, the location, the population of the region, and the flexible designs of the prefabricated slabs of concrete that make up the homeless, homes of tomorrow, are truly going to become a thing of socialism, a symbol of socialism, and modernization. The smiling old man also proposed giving colors so that his robust and inexpensive system doesn't look dreadful, observers. 
The lumps are dumb. And the terror soon emerges as the film flicked to life. The beginning was the usual propaganda that dominated German media extorting the public to join the party smash fascism and truly establish the worker state. But then a new segment began, one that film hadn't seen before. A young mother sat in the midst of a ruined street breastfeeding a child. Great figures walked past her. Uh, their features indistinguishable. The only similarity is a familiar red, white, and black armband. The mother seemed to grow older the more past her. Her hair turning gray and the cries of a child increasing more and more. Then the color of figure entered the screen. A young man bearing the now common SED symbols walked around the mother as he offered her his hand and a key. Rising from her seat, the woman entered the house next to her and sat down with a wary sigh. The text that blared across the screen was now homelessness is a fascist ploy. Join the war against homelessness, directed by Conrad Wolf. That last name, could it be just a coincidence? Wilhelm thought to himself he didn't know, but Conrad was indeed the brother of Marcus and lived by his father's art. Now, unlike his old, cold older brother, the director was invested in emotional and melancholic stories, and this piece was a space for his talent. The film itself was nothing new, but the exhortation against soullessness act at the beginning stayed with Willem as he rose from the cinema and entered the streets. The tattered men and women that sat along the walls of the bullet-marked buildings only hammered home the message. As Willem walked past an old man begging by the side of the road, he paused. His house was empty these days. It wouldn't hurt to have another face around his life. Turning to the man, he asked a simple question. Do you need a place to stay? A new comrade joins the fight. What is this? Smash Brothers? Rota Nakmitag. Stefan Forkolb lived his entire life under the Third Reich, from when he was born in Hitler's years as Fuhrer, when he was racing conquest after conquest. As his nation became the world's hegemon, he was blonde, athletic, and always exceeding, exceeding expectations in all classes. He enjoyed all the privileges that the system had to offer. He would have probably fought for the Wehrmacht if it wasn't for the tragedies that were lo losing his parents during the Civil War and then losing his sister, an activist for democracy, killed during the Brandenburg Gate Massacre. Stefan was only one of the many who suffered the consequences of the collapse of the Reich, a part of the disgruntled masses that were now eager to overthrow it. They were touched by the words, the propaganda, and the speeches that the revolutionaries repeated through everyday battle. Dedicated the rest of his life to assisting those who he now called comrades, he learned the depressing truth of the atrocities that Hitler, his party, and his army helped perpetuate across the world. His goals and beliefs changed simply from an attempt to avenge Petra, as he began to sympathize with the ideals of communism, and the nation turned red. Uh, many like him were initially reluctant, but figured the only way out could move they can move on with their lives and ensure a bright tomorrow was to plow, build, and create like never before. A free generation had risen up, one that would bring new life to the land of Marx, Engels, and Tailman. The skies filled, the was filled with smog began to clear, and the streets once filled with bodies, weaponry, and rubble were now being cleansed. The people's blood, sweat, and tears dripped across all the lands as the work of hundreds of thousands, if not millions, started to lay the foundation of a society that would truly break away from the old and start anew. An era would end, and a new cycle begins, spinning the unstoppable wheel of history. Stefan would have his hands full with an engineering project in Leipzig this afternoon, nonetheless. It all felt worth it. Was hält die Zukunft bereit? What does it mean? Like, what does the future hold? And you do central planning. The National Socialist economy was nothing short of a disaster for the German proletariat. From the moment they took power, the Nazis focused on destroying the already small amount of power that the workers had under the Weimar Republic. Unions were destroyed or taken over by the state. Wages were frozen, and most of the economy was given to a few incredibly wealthy industrialists. Now, however, we have the chance to make a more just economy. The five-year plan, the first of its kind to ever happen in Germany, will make sure of this. A new course in the nation's history, this economy will be geared to make sure that the workers, not the wealthy, own the means of production. Furthermore, to assist with the management of the economy, we'll begin employing alternative methods, such as the use of cybernetics and advanced electronic devices for computation. New Baugebiet. It's only natural to assume the role of the president of the Volkskammer, being the man in charge of the upper and lower chambers of the bicameral legislation, legislature in Germany, as a colossal burden that would be difficult for every man. Despite this, the smiling senior uncle of the Germans, Max Reimann, calmly handles this function like it was nothing and continues to intrigue and amass, or I should say amaze, millions with his touching speeches. However, Reimann wasn't only a man of words. He was forged as a crucial and fearless revolution in the Communist Party of Germany, and he also knows how to be a man of action. If his optimism is misplaced or is not as irrelevant matter, the dreams that the supreme representative of the People's Chamber could become reality after all. Vladimir Lenin told us a dream, as long as we understand reality. One of these dreams that he made clear is to completely revitalize Germany. Through the various agreements, uh, arrangements of buildings that now were used in the struggle against homelessness and overall whole cities were built or rebuilt in this model. Members that were once separated by the strict echelons of this corrupt fascist society bonded together for the planning of new designs for homes and cities. Although the new commission was very fond of the suggestion of changes in the naming of certain towns to honor revolutionaries, the party advises, or advised that they need to focus as the people were still struggling and needed immediate results, not a visual graphical amusement. A new construction sector proved its effectiveness as all across Germany. The infrastructure was improving by a wide margin. After months, weeks, and days of work, they would see a new Machstadt. Certainly, there would be more years of development ahead, but it was certainly not a shambles. Rather, it was shining with a red dawn and illuminating it. Only one thing can be said across all towns and villages. The sun welcomes the Republic. Oh, hold the Hamburg trial. It's striking the base. Launch a second operation against the partisans. 
should probably do that one next. In the seas and towns across the nation, men and women of the revolution go about their lives. One can only imagine these people were just months prior suffering under the boots of fascism, of fascism and capitalists. But in the forest and the Schwarzwald, and in the mountains, exist remnants of the old order. Fascist rats can congregate in abandoned military installations, form a Hitler Youth camps, and makeshift compounds. If we were to finally purge the Nazis and their influence on our nation, we must strike their bases. A kaibanetisha okonomi. There was once a dream which was written in the Communist Manifesto by the two of the men who considered our nation's greatest founders, Karl Marx and uh, Friedrich Engels, that the proletariat organized as a ruling class would organize all instruments of production under the state using its political supremacy, that it would build an economy by and for the exploited, not by the exploiters, one free from the yoke of capitalist crisis and the bourgeoisie corruption and hierarchies achieving true development, the planned economy, which would be born from the workers' control of the workers' app of the state's apparatus. Never came to be in the union of Soviet socialist republics instead, when Vladimir Lenin wisely took a step backward and transitioned from a semi feudal imperial system and developed the capitalist basis. To allow for a steady recovery under the new economic policy, his promise to step forward to socialism didn't arrive. After his tragic passing away, his successors, who in, in Gerhard Schoel's vision were not only terrible economists but lousy Marxists, did not continue the process of nationalization, industrialization, and collectivization, but let the power of the small landowners and small entrepreneurs grow. From that point on, the USSR entrenched itself into the capitalist system and collapsed politically and economically with it. Sure had worked and received a lot of papers. He had lost nights working, even in, even directly called Wilf asking for a bigger team to better support industries and make the breakthrough they wanted. Although Germany was smaller than the Soviet Union, the population was comparable and the economy was very way more developed and larger. There was no precedent precedent for planning except for some early Soviet writings, references from the distant Joseph Stalin, and then the nervous economist smiled. After reading Soviet and German archives, he found the works of Anatoly Kitov about an economic automated management system. He published his book with certain Glushkov and Zidanov. It was perfect for a nationwide information and planning network with, and with the massive electronics industry and computer system, it was feasible to implement the plan gradually. Announcing it on TV, he coined the terms electronic socialism and cybernetic economy. The future is now. As we hold the Hamburg trials, a German nation has a long tradition regarding the law dating the imperial period, whether it be private or public. Sadly, much of the unified codification jurisdiction was severely hurt by the Volks Gesetz book, a new code in which the NSDAP could effort at least twist the laws to suit their needs. With both penal and civil codes harmed by their hand, the fate of the building a truly fair system now rests with us. Our codes must punish crimes against the people, peace, humanity, and human rights so that the innocent may be protected. Instead of some dispersed communal laws, a homogeneous legislature will be implemented, though serve not only to punish but to rehabilitate. Whilst doing away the unethical laws of the old, be it by the noose or walk by the bullet, the hammer of justice will continue to do the work of the crushing the snake of Nazism as we will put our laws to test and show the world that fascism is on its so deathbed. now I've spent a little bit more time with this and we're going to still screw this up I'll be honest I'm not very good at this I'm very very bad at this stuff so um so we want to infiltrate the cells first I think gives them a little bit more gives us a little more infiltra infiltration which is nice but uh yeah I'm gonna screw this up again so my apologies if this doesn't do very well but you know request support we could do that if we need more supply supplies okay for now more corruption I've got more, more for morale. 200. I'm not sure how high we need, like, infiltration or anything like that, so. Um, raids, base strength. Doesn't really help too much. Restoring 25 morale to all friendly characters. Anti Nazi propaganda. Um. That kind of worked. Stop doing as much. Infiltrate the cells. I need a little bit more morale now. Supply. So it says restore 25 morale to all characters, but this guy, his morale's not going up. Oh, it just did, that time. Can you do a couple raids? Supply's still fine. Infiltration. We need more morale. Oh. Hmm. We need more supply now. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not very good at this, like I said. I get the base idea how to do this, but... Yeah, there's not much we can really do. This is nearly impossible for us to do. See, the Volksbotsai began their incursion quietly, on a night with, with, night with no moon. 
Roads in and out of the compound were blocked, and Volkspot's Polizei infantry trucked through the forest in an effort to block the fascist escape. The attack was to commence at 1.30, and the Volkspolizei units would converge on the compound from all sides, snuffing them out in one overwhelming blow. At least that was the plan. Instead, at 104, the forest teams were met with unplanned machine gun fire from the compound. It was completely routed as the men just were beyond the front of the assault were covered in blood and bone fragments. Before 32 were struck down by the ensuing carnage at 111. The forest teams rallied the reserves and settled in for a siege that would last until Sunday the next day. From dawn till dusk, the machine guns fired to fend off from the Volkswagen side, all the while the Volkswagen side fired back, tit for tat, over and over. A cycle of painful death and a little advancement. Logistics proved the decisive factor, as the fashion machine guns ran out of ammunition, while the Volkswagen side were supplied via local roads. As the machine guns went silent, the fascists descended into their bunkers, sitting in the compound in silence. For fear of destroying valuable intelligence, flamethrowers were not used. Instead, the Volkspolizei would have to enter the compound to clear up the fascists. With a bang, the Volkspolizei rushed into the compound. They encountered no resistance, but instead they found the fascists hanging from the low ceiling. A fitting end to a coward's folly. So, I apologize for that. I mean, I'm just not very good at that stuff. I'm any more experienced with that, but... Yeah, hold the trials, huh? Nice. Uh, if you'd really like to read this one, please go ahead again. Uh, yes. Found the Stasi. Oh. <coughs> it's clear that a revolution cannot be made with white gloves. We're always within the enemy's field of vision. As a triumph was earned against the reactions by near margin. <coughs> Warriors, there mustn't be hesitation, as the adversaries. Other proletariat and national social scourge must be eradicated, even if it means the surrender of freedoms we have to consolidate a ministry for state security. It's clear that the capitalist powers will try to divide and conquer us. The threats to existence are inside and outside. We must build a national center apparatus and networks to control the situation within and build a directive for international reconnaissance for covert operations that deal with foreign matters, too. Like the Czechists. We'll carry a mighty sword, one that'll ensure that loyal lo order, loyalty, and the complete destruction of fascism will mark the next chapters of our history. <coughs> the Polish Revolution only a month ago. The German Reich, the heartland of the international fascism, fell to the revolution after that. The Red Tide Revolution is only advanced, as reports now suggest the Red Flag floods over Warsaw. With the collapse of Germany, the already fragile administration in Poland cannot continue any longer, it seems. And nothing short of a total government collapse has occurred across the nation. While the last remaining reactionary elements purged from Poland, the new communist government has several has several issues to deal with. However, after years of exile, various Polish leftists, such as Władysław Gomułka, have returned to the country to lead the People's Republic. The red flag marches on. Oh, we're allied. Home defense. Not yet lost. Chaos in Warsaw versus these guys. The underground state. Well. Oh, they want our help. Well, I guess technically. Do we enact war taxes? <coughs> Excuse me. Justice by blood. Huh. That's actually going down because we're going at war now, but whatever. For years, many have been waiting for this. Hundreds of thousands of victims were chanting around Hamburg for the closely accompanying the historic event happening in front of their eyes. They recently fought or found to the Supreme Court of the German People's Republic. Under the Supreme Public Prosecutor of the Republic, Joseph Streit, began the trials of the representatives and the collaborators of the Third Reich for all of their crimes during the reign of Europe and other parts of the world. In charge of the defense was a very nervous Friedrich Wolf. The son of a Jewish doctor is advised by Karl Friedrich Karl. Karl, another prominent Marxist lawyer, not to partake in the defense, but he accepted it as, as a challenge to prove the judicial integrity of the Republic and be, to be given the foundations of a new legal system. How the mighty have fallen, whispered Wolf, seeing Donuts, Globke, Speidel, Gaden, Gela, and many others. Long days went on as the court allowed for the opening statements and the overwhelming evidence presented by the prosecutors kept the tide extremely in the favor. There's so many unpunished. The sentences must be executed now that people want justice. As popular pressure pushed more, some of the most ruthless killers of humanity, tortures, and many involved in the project, such as Cyclone B or Levensraum, were sent to the Spezia Lager to be shot. Mountains of paperwork accumulated as court sessions ran on. This trial uh, intrigued some observers from the OFM, as also dwelled in the international matters when it put when it put into the forefront the crimes many of the NSDAP, Wehrmacht, the companies, and the other various arms of the Reich committed in foreign lands. Executions were ramping up, and the most prominent members, like Donuts, were hanged for the crimes. The defense was initially disorganized, but was able to reduce some of the sentences to rehabilitation and imprisonment instead of life without parole to the death penalty. The efforts relied on evidence of insignificance and coercion of the defendants, trying to make them look sympathetic and imply re-education would show their triumph of socialism. As thousands of monsters lay dead and chains, Hamburg was only the beginning. The march of justice goes on. Organizing the land reform. 
One wonders how thousands of kilometers of land could be owned by only a handful of people. The answer is quite simple. Really, the industrials and their snake-like Nazi benefactors. Already local councils are organizing the mass incarceration of suspected managers, organizers, and executives that had served under the Nazi government. As part of a larger effort to begin a transition of the Republic's collective land to a communal centrally planned administration, the Bolden Reform, as endearingly named by Gerhard Schur, has become a focal point of discussion across the Volkskammer Central Committee. With many of Mokstad's politicians on how such a monumental change in Germany's primary economy would be appreciated or approached. However, no matter creed or ideology, every representative in Mokstad agrees on one simple fact. Reform had to be done now. It had to be done thoroughly. No more compromises. We must transform Germany's golden fields and be swept away by the sands of history. As we will continue with this, and we'll do a batch of middle-ranked officers will be brought to the high ranks of the armed forces. Be more coordinated. Go in, my friends. <clears throat> Blow them up. <coughs> As you should. We'll make Lemberg communist again. Mm. Always vigilant. When Eric Mika arrived, he was greeted by the spies of Thunder's applause as he gave a salute and walked between two formations of sergeants, captains, and uh, soldiers. One concrete fact, fact stood out. No one, uh, no matter if they favored the field marshal and the security minister or not, disrespected him. His legacy of relentless battle against fascism has heard him a, earned him a legendary position among the Volksrepublik, and now with the creation of the Ministerium for Staatssicherheit, his authority is ever higher. Reunited the Volkswald sign of the divisions that would form the core of the Stasi, the announcements were made very clear. <clears throat> The idea was to create a sword and shield of the party that would serve the SED in its ventures and act according to the Constitution, the Penal Code, and the Civil Code. However, Eric Mielke and his militaries factored into different plans in their mind for how the military would operate. They wouldn't make treachery of it, of course, but proposed their ideas gradually, as the areas, area precincts, the locations of detachments, the question of censorship, and the line of principle began to dis be discussed. A map was outlined, naturally. The conversation gets to the main corners, or concern, the fifth column, the Verbov. It was, of course, agreed that they must be ruthless with them, that it must be all covered. As the discussion stopped, Milka began his speech. We must be firmly disciplined like our Prussian forefathers before us. Veterans lay within our enemy's ranks. No mercy with an enemy of the party and an enemy of the state. As the conversations went on, quotes and phrases impacted the officers who wouldn't break even a sweat. They were mesmerized as they were given a new duty. Even if Eric wasn't the brightest politician, he knew his way around propaganda. We must shatter all the f their forts, if it even fills the rivers with blood. The people's army is the true forefront of the revolution throughout a new society. We are the fighters of the invisible front. A whooping hurrah was heard in the room, but they left the room speechless. Eight, add state security services. Huh. Oh, wow. Own operative detection chance factor. Own operative chance capture chance. Agency upgrade time. Holy crap. Increased investments in propaganda all across Germany. Cool. Oh. And an operation and the collaboration of the fascist regime oppressing the Dutch people will begin. Oh, we go to war with them too. Well, okay. Smashing the swastika. From the beginning, Hitler and his animalistic followers sought fit to implement their horrendous culture of domineering supremacy into every facet of European life. From the architecture and literature, to even the way we walk on the streets, it was all molded to dance with the tune of Germania's strings as decades passed, it became a simple fact of life for the average German. We know better now. We all know better. If we have to advance the liberation of all peoples, we must tear it all down. Comrade Wolf has asked for nothing less than a construction of the past so that we may advance the future. Our citizens will be called upon to take the charge, fighting and destroying all that could drag down the revolution or sympathize with the past. Simultaneously, the creation of new ministries with broad powers concerning the control of anti-revolutionary materials will begin in earnest soon. There will be nothing holding us back from the utopia we were promised so long ago. Honestly, with this part, some things like it, 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 I don't know. I wish I, I knew it better. Director's Harvest. It's amazing. Plowers local council did not lie. They had some pretty modern equipment ready for the distribution. A fleet of a full shit. E-512 Combine Harvesters, 15 strong, stood in front of the Gustav and his newly assigned communal workers. Engineers from the inner city milled about the scene, prepared the a harvester for deployment and making the last minute uh, spit shines. Spit shines. This is the future Gustav, chuckled Robert, a friend of Gustav and head of the Plowers Agriculture Committee. No more second-rate machines, while the best are saved only for the richest landowners in Germany. Moksha promised action and by God will answer in tandem. He gave smoke to Gustav before being dragged away by an engineer qu carrying quite the amount of papers. It was funny, really. <clears throat> Gustav sat, I still remembered his farm, back in the 59, when he was sacked only by slaves and the drivers. He worked there, sure, he just managed inventory, though. He hated that farm deeply, yet he ironically needed it. His family needed money. He remembered the cries of pains he heard outside the small office, the intermittent gunshots in the distant field after the revolution. It was quickly jailed for collaborative efforts, but Robert managed to personally save him from further punishment. It was only a few months later that he was asked to become the manager of the entire facility. <coughs> it would be different, he told himself. Endless hours would never happen again. There would be peace and harmony amongst his workers, along with the equal opportunity for advancement. Gone were the days of nepotism and autocracy in the workplace. This was an equal society, and he would ensure the best for everyone under him. Gustav's thoughts were then cut and trained by the sudden roar of our harvester's engine near him. 
There was Robert, laughing heartily in the driver's seat. As engineers cheer for the success, Gustav smiled. Indeed, it would be different. Gordon Fields, Gordon Hart. Let's go to war with Dietzlin. Ah, good job. Oh, Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic is here too. Oh. Reform National Socialist, eh? Member of the Zolverein. Well, they're the only member of the Zolverein now. Wait, wait, so we, we got the territory. What the heck? Oh, okay. Well, even when we're communist, we still take out Polish territory. We're still, take, still take it on. We're gonna screw. Oh, this is so unfair. What the heck, man? No, treat Nazi cells. Should a raid. Arrest. Oh, wait, what? Eliminate? Oh, okay, I had another hit. Golo lost another two that's a fist made contact with the lower jaw, sending him to the floor with an unceremonious thump around him. Flames roared and people crowded it like him, around him with cheers of revolutionary fervor. <clears throat> there were cheers, though he couldn't quite tell they were directed towards him or the books they were busy throwing into the bonfire. For nearly a week, this had been a regular event for the people of Stuttgart. They would march to the streets singing old anthems and hymns of the classic of Marcus Caliber and begin burning anything and everything that was confusing with a swastika. Sometimes they would drag people with them. Golo was reminded of this with another kick to the torso, forcing out a groan from his tired throat. Fascist pig dog, where's your father? shouted at his assault, or receiving cheers of agreement from the crowd. Golo wins. His father died during the revolution, not that he cared much about him. He was an author, a prolific in Stuttgart, specializing in rich studies for the city's university. Golo could never agree with his rabble. He hadn't taken talked to him ever since. The assaulter grabbed his shirt, dragging him onto his feet. Your family's nothing but brown shirt trash, as he said this. His eyes drew to the fire. Perhaps we should burn you too, then, he said, a wicked smile growing on his face. He could feel the dancing flames growing closer to his back until the man was ready to suddenly grab by the shoulder. A police officer thought Golo thanked the Lord. Let him go, Comrade, he said before looking at Golo. He's not worth it. As the soldier relented slightly, receiving a stern look from the officer before he simply let Golo fall to the floor. Next time, Pig Dodd, he spat out before disappearing into the crowd, leaving Golo on the streets, bloody and battered, the sovereign pain to go. The sins of the father. Rooting out the rats. Some may assume that a new state is secure from any immediate threat from within. They thought. They may think that the revolution itself was enough to remove whatever repugnant and shameless Nazi storm in Germany, or at least they would be too afraid of the new government to try anything too drastic against the government. It's a grave misunderstanding of our current situation. If we want to make sure that we are truly safe from counter-revolution, we must investigate the broader population and ensure that the reactionaries that remain are dealt with. A list of former employees of organizations such as the SS will be employed to help us track down fascists, any fascists, they're still in hiding, and we'll worry information that helps us to track down targets. With any luck, the state of fascism will soon be removed permanently from Germany. And this image declares, well, What is a state without its foundations, especially one that will become so centralized as a future of Marxist-Leninist utopia? Kermit Volz realizes this, and thus spoken his intentions clearly. A constitution is needed post-haste. After so many hardships over these past few months, he has declared our nation to be ready for a constitutional convention, which will see the drafting and approval of our founding documents by a special concession of the Volkskammer, whilst the Central Committee oversees the procedure. This constitution of the German People's Republic will be the cornerstone in which our nation shall be built. From, from provisions that allocate national and local authority to the very rights that our commons will be bestowed with, the monumental stakes here are clear to see. If all goes well, our people will uh, soon live happily and free, knowing that other lives, families, and laborers are forever guaranteed to be safe and secure in a caring and functional government. Oh, we can't do this one. Invisible Front. <coughs> oh, hot smut shot. You stand accused of crimes against humanity. Records show that during your years in the Wehrmacht, you were in charge of multiple operations against partisans without fail. These actions led to massacres and unspeakable miseries for locals who are unfortunate to be there. For your actions, you've been sentenced to death. Mika had taken the liberty of watching the final few trials, and it had been a great relief for him. After all this time and so much struggle, the people who had destroyed the lives of countless millions were finally being put to justice, and those who had fallen in the revolution were finally being currently avenged. Who wouldn't want to enjoy such a spectacle? Some people in SED might be worried about the growing uh, power of Mikkel's organization. For sure, they'd probably be starting to grow fearful of his power, worried that he may one day be able to challenge a position. Mikkel hoped that Wolf, Maldoro, and the rest of would see reason eventually. Could then see that the fight against fascism required drastic measures? For men like Eric, there stood no other way. To truly clear out his infestation of Vebos, they would need to clear out florists to rid the fatherland of their nests. It reminded him of a quote and by, uh, said by a man he admired, When you chop wood, chips fly. Chips fly. 
There will be consequences, but alas, there could be threats everywhere looking amidst the crepuscular woods. However, Alice would not worry him for too long. Sure, for the foreseeable future, he would be making many enemies, but eventually, some of them would realize that wa uh, watching over so-called ordinary citizens were necessary to eradicate Nazism, and the officers he had purged were formulating an anti-socialist plot. After all, he and his force had won the battle, but not the war. Oh, crap. Emergency Committee for anti communist Security Acts next. Well, you know what? Screw it. We're going to save. Okay, so this is really unfair. 196, 196, 100. Okay, come on. Bruh. No, now it just jumped way down. That's so stupid. Sheepskin. Also, Raymer started stared out over the swamp. He fled to ever since the Reich's fall. Behind him, his first were raising the house that he'd been hiding out in as leader of the Verwolves. The captured members of the Volkswagen side who tried to hunt him down were also in there. Turning behind him, he stared at the man who were lord of the Reich above all, lord of the ideals that made Germany great. This is a tall and proud of string of victories against the Volkswagen side, but it was enough to ensure them that national socialism would return one day. The Bolsheviks and their Jewish puppet masters had thought that the men of the Reich would be defeated with ease. They had been wrong. The Reich had not fallen because of the weakness of the great Aryan men, but the weakness of the liberals and traitors that had taken over the following the death of the Fuhrer, Trusko, Speer, and Overlander were all fools and traitors of the Reich and the Volk. A new struggle was needed, and Otto Rehmer would pick it. Returning to his men, turning to his men, he began to speak. Soldiers, the struggle for Germany is not yet over. Our fight is not yet over. The Reich will be a forge, and traitors, Bolsheviks, Jews, and the liberals that brought down the greatest work of the Aryan Volk will be punished. The Reich will rise again, but for now we must hide. We must gather our forces. This new Volk Republic is weak. We'll merge triumphant soon. For now, though, now we hide. We gather the might of social, national socialism. And we testify the flame until it scours Bolshevism from Germany. And cheer the fall was music to his ears, he took out the cap that he had worn ever since the Reich's greatest triumph and threw it into the raging fire. The communists would fall, the Reich would return, it was all a matter of time, the lurking threat. That's so stupid. I'm sorry, but that's so stupid. Doing this whole GUI game is not, you know, in my opinion. And this is a wars. What is a state without its foundations, especially when they become so centralized as the future of our Marxist Leninist utopia? Kermit Wolf realizes this, and thus has spoken his intentions clearly. A constitution is needed post haste. After so many hardships over these past few months, we have declared our nation to be ready for constitutional convention. And we'll see the drafting and approval of our founding documents by a special session of the Volkskammer, whilst the Central Committee oversees the procedures. This constitution of the People's German Republic will be the cornerstone on which our nation shall be built. From provisions that allocate national and local authority over the very rights their comrades will be bestowed with, the monumental stakes here are clear to see. And if all goes well, our people will soon live happily and free, knowing that their lives, families, and labors are forever guaranteed to be safe and secure in a caring and functional government. I think I read that one. I might have. Oh well. A socialist constitution. After all the voices were heard and the amendments were ratified in the German People's Congress, the time has arrived for the Central Committee to review, expand, and correct, and promulgate <clears throat> a genuinely socialist constitution for our public. Only decisive action may forever cement our objective of safeguarding human liberty and rights, reshaping collective and economic life in accordance with the principles of social justice. Serving social progress no matter the cost and promoting secure peace and amity with all peoples. This new constitution shall be approved through the new democratic constitution via popular referendum to introduce the new organizations of state authority, the new principles of education and health care, the new socialist, economic, and one-party order. The popular representative body through a lender and the Volkskammer cobbled the fundamental rights of its citizens. It begins a campaign against sexual, religious, and racial inequality while outlawing prejudice. The principles of anti-fascism. The Volkskammer was always alive in the place. Police and military officers alike stood at guard in each corridor and doorway while his clerks fell in and out of the people's chamber where hundreds of Germany's finest politicians, bureaucrats, and political wranglers gathered to argue in some of the most critical decisions that steer the German ship of state. From the most loyal labor of our glorious socialist republic to the vilest traitor looking in the shadows, one thing could be agreed. Germany had never been seen more open for politicking for decades. For the last week, though, the Volkskammer had been livelier than before, albeit with less positivity than one would assume from a nation's legislative body. Some of the finest deputies of the people gathered to discuss and argue on certain provisions of the newborn constitution. While all present were unified in the commitment for a better caring Germany, their methods to reach the state were quite differentiated. Reactionary pigs, you wouldn't know the first thing about Marxist theory if it slapped you across the face. I will not stand this kind of rabble. Won't somebody detain this traitor already? A shoe flaw. <clears throat> or shoe flu. 
and knocks one in the head, ringing out a cry. Who threw that shoe? It didn't matter anyway. The soldiers had already intervened, dragging an awfully silent representative from his chair and out of the room. This only exacerbated problems in the uproar of the room, only increased in magnitude by the minute. Max Ryman could hardly hear himself think. It took several long, grueling hours later, and several fits of rage from Ryman himself, in which a constitution had emerged from the storm clouds politics. Finally, under the united front of anti fascist, socialist, and progressive alike, we've taken the first step towards the truly utopia Marx had promised long ago. Workers of the world unite. Cool. Even though, I know, well, we have a little bit of taxes. Excise revenue, that's it. Deficit's looking not so good. Not so good right now. Inflation's looking great, though. I love inflation. Um, but, but GDP's not good. The socialist constitution. Oh, wait, what? Red Germany invades it. They're already dead. Uh, the news from Europe continues to make headlines as the new communist regime in Germany has moved troops into the Netherlands. This invasion follows along as a purchase from members of the old uh, National Socialist regime as well as those sympathetic to the ideology. As such, it's no surprise that the German People's Republic, the DVR, has set its sights on overthrowing the National Socialist Dutch regime. In addition, the DVR has announced that the goal of Operation Shaft is to establish a new Dutch regime consistent with the principles of worker liberation. This dashed hopes of a return to the Surinamese Dutch government and exile to the mainland, as well as hopes that the new German regime would be a friend of the OFM. It seems that the new Germany wishes for hegemony by finishing off the Rex Commissariats, meeting the new boss out with the old boss. Oh! Dutch People's Republic led by Paul de Groot! Remember the Zolverein, huh? Wait, what? Uh. Exile Dilemma. Longest Hours. Well. Okay. Oh, well, I still could, can do these ones. Happy, discontent, discontent, so... Uh... Well, okay. Or disorganized, coordinating, coordinating. Lead von Vaterlem. It was finally a beautiful hard morning for Marcus Wolf. The march of the joyful men of the country could be heard outside. He stared at the window for a couple minutes silently before knocking the door caught him off guard. An interesting letter was given. It was specifically a communique concerning the question of the results of the referendum on the con constitution of the German People's Republic, and they went positive, specifically 87% positive. A straightforward question, are you... For a new constitution to build a German nation, a road to the future of peace firmly based upon the principles of anti-fascist, democratic, and socialist ideology? Which the answers were either a resigning yes or a calming no. Although Eric Milka insisted that the Stasi need a spy on whoever voted no since they had chances of being werewolves, Marcus protected the democratic process and instead insisted on the supremacy of the party and the SED over any military apparatus. The nation of the promulgation was one of the celebrations throughout the nation as the Freie Deutsche Jungen, initiated the youthful fervor and indomitable force in the Volksarmee who crossed generations to protection and honor only years ago. Germany was in shambles, the nation dominated by vultures, butchers, and criminals who turned it into a horrid place filled with nothing but smog, piles of bodies, division, and regression. Now, all those hearts were beating so free. There were so many people with love, workers, farmers, Germans, Poles, Czechs, Christians, Jews, men, women, children, and even homosexuals, even though they weren't accepted by all those in the party, nonetheless. They could all announce to the world that they, know they are two things. Comrades and proud citizens of the German People's Republic. The news articles will come into effect, being promulgated by the chairman, which shed a single tear while determining the new administrative policies uncharacteristic of them. Nonetheless, principles of trade unions, labor, taxation, compulsory, and free education, the rights of women and motherhood, the new economic order, and the new political and social order were all established by 100 articles, closing a dark chapter in German history and opening a bright new future. Our greatest endeavor will be our unity. Oh, the political power stability. And that's the end of Rotten Morgan. Now, I apologize for being kind of like persnickety against this whole GUI thing against, you know, uh, the whole trying to take out the variables. But we did, I get, did get adventure to work eventually, but I wish it was just maybe slightly tweaked. And obviously, I'm not very experienced with that, so I apologize if the devs watching, so I apologize uh, <laughs> again for being so ragey about that and being stupid about it sometimes. But it was somewhat frustrating to do, especially if you have no idea. I mean, the tooltips are cool and all, but like, if I just had more time to experiment with it, I would have done better. But regardless, I have super high hopes for this mod. I love the idea of a Red Germany in the Tino timeline, especially with the Rot uh, Front and Poland with us, of course, the uh, Dutch with us, and see what else could happen. So, oh, we're also down here too. That's actually really cool. Even though that might be that, yeah, Africa Shield. Oh, they're still fighting this in South Africa. Holy crap, it's 1966. But, regardless, I know this video is a little bit longer than my normal videos, but if you enjoy the campaign, this single video, <clears throat> and would like to see it develop further, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, please consider also leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. We don't really believe in taxes here, and I hope you all have a great, great rest of your day.